With turbulence, crying babies, and worst of all, airplane food, there are plenty of reasons to fear flying. However, trained aircraft pilots are the best of the best. And when we jet off on vacation, we're always in a safe pair of hands. Now, some of you with aerophobia, that's an extreme fear of flying, might not believe that. But with that said, it's time to show you some pilots who've dealt with unusual stowaways, insane runways, and some of the most dangerous landings ever. So please, fasten your seatbelts as we get ready for one hell of a flight. Scareport Let's start our journey by visiting one of the world's scariest airports, flying down to the Caribbean island of St. Bart's, and checking out some landings that make me want to St. Barf. St. Barthélemy's Gustav III Airport boasts one of the most dangerous runways in the world. A 2,119-foot stretch of asphalt built directly next to a very steep hill. At Gustav III, the short runway and steep approach leave almost no room for failure, as the pilots have to tilt their noses to the ground to get down to the runway. It doesn't take a genius to see that Gustav III is one of the most dangerous airports in the world, and by far the most dangerous hair salon. Many tourists climb up the hill to snap photos and videos of incoming planes. However, sometimes the pilots come in lower than expected, forcing the spectators to physically duck underneath their landing gear. Jeez, forget a haircut. Getting your timing wrong here could leave over-avid spectators with a head cut. If this wasn't sketchy enough, the airport doesn't actually have a fully-fledged air traffic control system. In most airports, an air traffic controller sits in a tall tower by the runway, instructing pilots when it's safe to land or take off. Now, pilots have explained that in St. Bart's, the lack of a tall control tower means that the air traffic controller is unable to provide any clearances for takeoff or landing, forcing the pilots to communicate amongst themselves to figure out when they can safely approach the runway. Talk about winging it. All in all, St. Bart's is a beautiful island with a terrifying airport. And if you plan on visiting the Caribbean paradise, I'd recommend traveling by boat. Interstate Runways Everybody loves a good road trip, but this journey in Quebec became extra trippy when the driver's attention turned from the open road to a plane falling out of the sky. While flying near Quebec City, Canada, the pilot of this Piper Cherokee sacre blew out his engine as the propeller on his plane gradually cut out. With no engine power, the pilot was left gliding through the air, and after radioing into air traffic control, he was told that the closest airport was too far away and he'd have to land on the nearby Highway 40. With no other options, the pilot was forced to land on the asphalt and merge into an active traffic lane. That's some pretty impressive driving, although he could have at least used his blinker. But sometimes when a plane is forced to land on a highway, it doesn't go so smoothly.
This driver caught the moment that a plane rapidly approached the highway in Evart, Michigan, flying past with incredible speed. And from that angle, the landing looks like a catastrophe. However, the pilot expertly landed the plane, touching down on the road and taxiing the aircraft to a gravel pit beside the highway. Similarly, this security camera caught the moment that a propeller plane jetted towards the Interstate 35 West in Minnesota, a mechanical issue forcing the pilot to land between two rows of cars. The pilot excellently dodged the cars behind him, and the pilots showed incredible composure getting their planes down without injury. Cats on a Plane Back in 2015, pilot Romain Gentaud embarked on a flight from Kuro Airport in French Guinea in his Sky Ranger, an ultralight utility aircraft that relies on a fabric-covered tubular construction design. To his knowledge, he had a single passenger, but what he didn't know was that there was an unexpected stowaway lurking right above him. A minute after takeoff, he discovered that the cutest co-pilot of all time had clambered aboard and taken a nap between the fabric sheets making up the wing. Cats always land on their feet, but at that height, I'm not so sure about that kitty's chances. After spotting the cat, Romain, uh, Romained calm, turning the plane around and heading back to the runway. Romain landed perfectly allowing him to hop out of the aircraft and get the kitten down to safety. Romain later explained that he had no idea how the cat got on board with him without noticing, assuming that it snuck onto the plane moments after he performed his pre-flight check. Although curiosity almost killed the cat, the kitty walked away unharmed and later became the flight school's official mascot. I think they should keep her away from planes from now on, though. This poor cat only has eight lives left. Risky Landing The Alps are some of the most dangerous mountains in all of Europe, with the range being notorious for its giant cliffs and deadly avalanches. It's also one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, with over 120 million skiers, snowboarders, and mountain climbers visiting the range every single year. As you can imagine, this is a dangerous combination and rescue helicopters are required to fly up the mountains on a daily basis, saving tourists that have gotten themselves lost or injured. But how do you land a helicopter on the side of a mountain? Well, it looks something like this. This insane landing technique is called appui patin, or skate support a method that requires the pilot to lean the helicopter's skates against the side of the mountain while simultaneously using the propellers to keep it level. And sometimes their blades spin incredibly close to the mountain, which if they even clip it, can cause disaster. This pilot was called up Chamonix to save an injured hiker, and after landing on the mountainside, the pilot managed to get as close as possible without damaging the rotor allowing paramedics to hop out of the aircraft and attend to their patient. At that point, they used the winch to lift the hiker and the paramedic into the air, flying the patient back down the mountain to get him urgent medical treatment. I'm sure the hiker's injury ruined his vacation, but at least his journey down the mountain looked pretty fly. Great British Takeoffs Lots of people associate Great Britain with tea, crumpets, and the royal family. But if British people truly love one thing, it's talking about the weather. Britain is known for its rainy days, and in 2022, the island nation was hit by Storm Franklin, a storm with top wind speeds of 75 miles per hour. The storm wreaked havoc in the UK, hitting trees, umbrellas, and the runway at Manchester Airport, 
slamming incoming flights with brutal crosswinds. Most airport runways are built on wide open ground, meaning that they're completely exposed if the airport is hit by a storm. A crosswind occurs when wind blasts over the middle of a runway, blowing any airborne planes to the side as they attempt to land. Now, a fully loaded Boeing 747 can weigh up to 875,000 pounds, but Storm Franklin blew them around like paper airplanes forcing the pilots to abort their landings and use insane maneuvers to get back into the air. But while the 747 struggled, it was the pilots of the smaller planes that really had their work cut out for them. For a second there, I thought we were watching a Weebles commercial. As this Citation jet attempted to land at Manchester, the crosswinds pushed it down to a dramatic angle, knocking its wings a few feet away from the concrete. The plane was just seconds away from crashing, but incredibly, the pilot was able to get back into the air, circling back to the start of the runway to retry their approach. The landing is often the scariest part of a flight, and when these flights were aborted, the poor passengers had to endure it twice. See, this is why I prefer road trips. Weathering a storm Now, Storm Franklin was pretty intense. However, the UK has been hit by even larger storms in recent years. In 2021, soccer games across Britain were cancelled when Storm Barra rolled in, a cyclone with top speeds of 81 miles per hour. Winds this strong can make walking around difficult, so imagine what it does to a pilot trying to land a plane. Now, despite Storm Barra's perilous winds, this incredible pilot at Manchester Airport refused to abort their landing, proving that they could safely land the aircraft despite the dangerous weather conditions. This situation required the pilot to make rapid adjustments to their landing, and incredibly, the ace pilot was able to correct their approach and safely bring the plane down, managing to effectively land it sideways fast in the furious Tokyo Drift style. I mean, the pilot handled the situation so well, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually Vin Diesel in the cockpit. Plane Pursuit Back in August 2019, a cop with the Washington State Patrol was cruising around when he was suddenly forced into an unusual pursuit. Normally, car chases are confined to the ground, but... This one started in the skies, when a small propeller plane was forced to make an emergency landing in the middle of a busy road.
The cop's dash cam picks up the moment that the plane shoots past him, flying dangerously close to the ground. The cop pulls a U-turn to pursue the pilot, but thankfully, they didn't need a SWAT team to knock the plane out of the sky, and the aircraft eventually touched down on its own. The pilot even respected traffic laws, stopping the plane at a red signal. It turns out the poor pilot's fuel system had malfunctioned mid-flight, and the plane was going to run out of gas before it reached a runway. As a result, when the cop hopped out of his car to approach, he didn't put the pilot in cuffs. Instead, he helped him push the plane off the road. Forget the long arm of the law. This is the strong arm of the law. Beach of a Landing Ah, uh, there's nothing quite like a relaxing trip to the beach. Sitting in the stand, getting a tan, dodging planes falling out of the sky. Wait, what? Now, this clip comes from the 2021 Cocoa Beach Air Show in Florida, when the pilot of a World War II-era TBM Avenger was forced to perform an emergency landing in the ocean. While flying in the air show, the pilot started to experience mechanical issues, losing altitude as the engine of the TBM Avenger cut out. The plane started to enter a nosedive its sharp propellers heading straight for a beach of hundreds of spectators. Incredibly, the pilot managed to avoid a potential disaster, turning the aircraft and smoothly ditching it into the ocean to avoid the civilians below. There were a few people swimming in the water when the plane went down, but luckily nobody was hurt during the incident. Once the plane had splash landed, beachgoers waded into the water to help the pilot. While they later managed to salvage the wreckage, the plane was left in a near unrestorable state. But more importantly, the pilot wasn't harmed. He was even able to climb out of the cockpit, sit on the plane's wing, and wonder how he was going to explain this situation to his boss. Land in the Sand While landing in the sea might sound like a nightmare, landing on the sand is a much more terrifying prospect. Don't believe me? Well, take a look at these beach landings filmed in Orange County, California and Treasure Island, Florida. His engine stopped. The footage comes from opposite coasts, however the situations are incredibly similar. Both beach days went from relaxing to terrifying, when the pilot's engines cut out mid-flight, forcing them to make emergency landings on the sand. Now, you might think that landing a plane on a soft surface like sand would be relatively safe. However, when it comes to landing on aircraft, a softer surface is actually more dangerous to land on. A plane's landing gear is designed to land on a hard runway at high speeds. When the wheels hit a sandy beach, they sink into the ground, and the plane's momentum can cause the landing gear to get wrenched backwards and break, forcing the plane to crash nose first. Luckily, in both cases, the planes were landed at the perfect angle to prevent wrenching, allowing both pilots to walk away totally uninjured. I guess you could call it a crash sanding. Homemade Horror If the thought of flying a regular plane terrifies you, you might not be keen to learn that kit planes exist. These are aircraft akin to flat-pack furniture, which arrive containing all the parts and instructions to build your own aircraft at home. Back in 2009, Kyle Davis and Joe Surwijk from Florida used a kit from Sky Ranger to build themselves a homemade plane in an attempt to fly from Winter Haven to Lakeland. And the trip was going smoothly, but halfway through the flight, the engine suddenly failed. I 
IKEA desk starts to shake, the worst-case scenario is some spilt coffee. But for Kyle and Joe, this situation became life and death, as the duo were left gliding through the air without any power. They briefly managed to restart the engine, but it cut out soon after, and the aircraft continued to lose altitude. Joe suggested landing in a nearby field, but the ultra-lightweight Sky Ranger wasn't designed for a bumpy landing. So Kyle headed for the road instead, lining up the plane with the asphalt as the ground rushed towards them. Miraculously, Kyle landed the plane perfectly, bringing the aircraft down in the middle of Heavendale Boulevard. Now, I'm not a big fan of clapping when the pilot lands the plane, but in this case, I reckon Joe's applause is justified. Kyle's perfect piloting saved both of their lives. And Kyle didn't just land the plane on the road, though. He managed to pull it out of traffic, taxiing the plane straight into a parking lot. Can you imagine being that level-headed in a crisis? All I can say is, props to him. First Time Flyer Flying a plane may look easy, but it takes a lot of work. Qualified pilots require hundreds, sometimes thousands of hours of flight practice, a clear head, and an awesome uniform. Okay, fine, so the uniform isn't compulsory, but becoming a pilot definitely requires a ton of training, right? Well, not necessarily. Back in May 2022, a man called Darren was one of two passengers on board a Cessna 208 caravan when he experienced a real nightmare at 30,000 feet. Suddenly, his pilot fell unconscious halfway through the flight. Darren tried everything to wake him up, but he was completely unresponsive, slumped over the controls as the plane fell into a nosedive. As the plane dived towards the ocean, Darren ran out of options, and the passenger was forced to skip flight school and jump straight to graduation, taking the pilot's seat to fly the plane. At this point, Darren had managed to contact air traffic control, explaining his situation. I'm a 333 Lima Delta, Roger, what's your position? I have no idea. I see the coast of Florida in front of me, and I have no idea. The air traffic controller immediately sprung to action, talking Darren through the process of flying and landing a plane. First, he figured out the exact type of plane that Darren was flying in, before printing off an image of the plane's controls online allowing him to give accurate advice. Darren was then given his first ever flight lesson, a crash course with one primary objective, not crashing. Three, Lima Delta, Roger, uh, try to hold the wings level and see if you can start uh, descending for me. Uh, push forward on the uh, controls and uh, descend at a very slow rate. Eventually, Darren came in for a landing. The ATC held their breath, and Darren brought the propeller plane down to the runway, setting the aircraft down smoothly and slowly in what turned out to be a textbook perfect landing. Whether it was beginner's luck, natural talent, or a real-life miracle, Darren landed the plane without incident, and ambulances rushed to the scene to help the unconscious pilot. As all of this happened, other pilots and air traffic controllers listened in on the line with bated breath. American 1845, you can make the left turn there, hold short of one zero left. It's going to be a couple minutes. Uh, you just witnessed a couple passengers land that plane. Not a problem. Uh, go ahead and uh, continue. We'll hold short one zero left, American 1845. Man, they did a great job. Did you say the passengers landed the airplane? That's correct. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. no, great job. No flying experience. 
we got a controller that worked them down. That's a flight instructor. That's As air traffic control praised Darren's landing, the paramedics rushed the unconscious pilot to hospital, where he was diagnosed with a torn aorta, a medical condition with an incredibly high mortality rate. People suffering from a torn aorta need rapid medical treatment to survive. And incredibly, the pilot made it to the hospital in time to receive life-saving treatment, as Darren's incredible composure and ace-flying skills allowed him to make a full recovery. Tightrope Choppers The success of a plane's landing is highly dependent on the runway, as we've already seen how a sandy or windy runway can turn a normal landing into a dangerous one in a matter of seconds. For a helicopter, landing is a bit more flexible, and the best helicopter pilots can park their choppers almost anywhere. Back in 2013, a Norwegian air ambulance pilot called Lars Amdahl proved this beyond a shadow of a doubt after receiving a call about a car crash on a road in Trondelag. As Lars arrived, he found that the winding lakeside road was clogged with cars, giving him no space to land. Well, almost no space. Lars was forced to land the helicopter on the road's guardrail, hovering the aircraft above the thin sheet of metal. Lars held the chopper steady as the EMT jumped out and attended to the driver, allowing Lars to take the chopper back into the air. Now, Lars is obviously a pro. But there are a few other examples of similarly sketchy landings from amateur chopper pilots. Just look at this guy dropping off his friend by landing on the guardrail of a bridge. Now, I thought this was a fake at first because of the speed of that rotor, but it only appears slow because the frame rate of the camera matches up to the rotation rate of the blades, like this. Well, that's certainly one way to beat the traffic. Seasick in the skies Now, bringing down a chopper on something stationary is one thing, but bringing it down on a moving target is a whole other level of skill. Check out this pilot who brought this helicopter down on a moving ship during a storm. This video comes from Prism Defense, a company that specializes in ship helicopter integration, or in plain English, the technology that helps helicopter pilots to safely and accurately land on boats. The company carries out many test flights, and in this one, the pilot of a Lynx Mark 90B helicopter was tasked with landing his chopper on a moving landing pad. As the storm batters the boat, the landing pad is thrown from side to side, tilting at sharp angles. The pilot pivots the helicopter to match these angles, and when the time is right, 
he manages to bring the chopper down perfectly, setting it down before another wave hits. The video is incredible, showing the maneuverability of a helicopter when placed in the right hands and also marking the first time that someone's felt seasick inside an aircraft. Mind your head. St. Martin in the Caribbean is reassuringly known as the Friendly Island, with the area boasting sandy beaches and tropical sun all year round. Despite this nickname, though, the island's main airport is particularly unfriendly, and for any pilot attempting to land at St. Martin, every landing is a dangerous one. The Princess Juliana Airport is located right on the coast of St. Martin, its single runway starting a few feet from the hugely popular Maho Beach. And this wouldn't be a problem, but at 7,500 feet, Princess Juliana's runway is on the short side for an airport, paling in comparison to JFK's 14,500-foot runway or the 12,800-foot runway in London Heathrow. As a result, planes landing at St. Martin have to use the entire runway to land safely, heading towards the airport with an incredibly low approach. This forces pilots to pass directly over the beachgoers at super low altitudes, with planes passing a few feet above their heads. Landing and taking off from St. Martin's tiny runway sounds pretty stressful, and to make matters worse, the pilots have to do it with an audience. Plane enthusiasts travel from all over the world to visit Maho Beach, and the airport is the perfect place to catch a glimpse of a landing up close, as long as they don't get sand in their eyes. Tail Touchdown Let's fly over to the UK for a moment. Not for the fish and chips, but to check out a pilot who came seconds away from a fatal crash landing. This flight took place during Storm Cory, a cyclone that hit the UK with 90 mile per hour winds back in January 2022. Easy, easy, easy! Oh my god! Chili! Oh my flipping! Despite the strong crosswinds, the British Airways pilot went in for the landing when a powerful gust hit at the very last second. The plane was frighteningly flipped onto its left wheel as the wind knocked it to the side. As the routine landing turned deadly, it was clear that a safe landing was no longer viable, so the pilot was forced to abort, desperately pulling up to get the plane back into the air. At this point, the plane was moving incredibly slowly, and as the pilot pulled up, the back of the plane hit the asphalt, an accident known as a tail strike. For a pilot, a tail strike is a pretty severe mistake and there are several cases of tail strikes damaging planes and injuring passengers. However, in this case, just as the tail clipped the ground, the pilot was able to rev up the engines and get the plane back into the sky. The reaction speed of this pilot is utterly incredible. If they hadn't been able to hit the gas when they did, there is a chance this plane would have landed on its side. Crowded Runway Private jets allow VIPs to travel the world, relaxing in style with champagne, caviar, and zero care for their carbon footprint, far away from the crying babies and cramped seating in coach. However, next up, we have a private jet flight that was incredibly stressful, as a flight landing in Asuncion, Paraguay, almost had a collision on the runway.
As the Gulfstream 5 private jet approached Asuncion, the pilot discovered that the runway was occupied by a group of workers performing some scheduled maintenance. As the jet flew towards the workers, the pilot desperately pulled up, and the maintenance crew scampered off the concrete, attempting to outrun the jet. Thankfully, both the pilot and the workers reacted in the nick of time, preventing a deadly collision. The private jet's near-miss went pretty public, with the video going viral back in 2019. However, the Paraguayan government later explained that the incident actually occurred around four years earlier, and after reviewing the terrifying footage, they reopened their investigation into the incident. The government still hasn't revealed who was at fault for the near-miss, but either way, if it wasn't for the pilot's quick reflexes and the speed of the maintenance crew, the situation could have been a total disaster. Instead, the only things that were damaged were four pairs of work trousers and the pilot's white flight suit, as the code red situation turned into a code brown. Blaze of Glory Ah, Daytona Beach. A city in Florida best known for NASCAR, spring break, and college kids passing out in the sand. Back in 2020, the pilot of a small jet couldn't catch a break at all, though, as the landing gear on his Cessna completely failed while approaching Daytona Beach Airport. With no wheels to land on, the pilot had to perform a no-gear landing by bringing the plane down smoothly on its belly. Daytona is known for burnt rubber, but the pilot burnt pure metal when the plane hit the asphalt, sparks flying high as it slid along the runway. These sparks soon turned to flames. As the pilot saw the fire raging in his peripherals, I'm sure he started to panic. However, he managed to keep the plane under control, holding it on a straight path until it slowed to a stop. The pilot and his passenger were shaken up but alive, all thanks to the pilot's picture-perfect landing. Talk about coming in hot. Well, it's time to store our tray tables in the upright position and prepare to land because uh, land about does it for our flight through the most dangerous landings with the world's greatest pilots. Which one of these landings scared, inspired, or impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.